I want to welcome Lonnie Beasley to the A Minute to Midnight show. It's really nice to be talking to you today, Lonnie. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here. Yeah, and you've got a pretty amazing story. Uh, before we get into the, you know, the main part of the testimony, how, how long have you been saved and what's your background? I was born and raised Catholic, very strict, and... Um, I was 22 when I had my testimony, and I was, um, it was back in 1972 when I was saved, and the incident happened about two years before that. Oh, so you were not saved when it happened? Oh, no. Okay. Didn't have any idea, because... In the Catholicism, when we grew up, you didn't know who is who. They did so many statues, and they 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 prayed to the Virgin Mary at the time. I don't know how it is now, but back then, everything was the Virgin Mary. And um, I didn't know. But, you know, you went to Catholicism, you went through all the classes, and you just didn't know. You were too young. You didn't know. And so when this happened, I was in awe, you know, uh, I didn't understand. Uh Uh-huh. Yes, well, I know about the Mary background and all that with the Catholicism because I grew up with that as well. So Yeah. uh Yeah. So what exactly happened? Well, um, I had just uh, gotten married, and we went to, um, with my parents and my sister and her husband, to Rocky Point, which is Choya Bay, Rocky Point, uh, Mexico, okay, because it's like four hours from Tucson, and uh, I was 22 in college, And I would go, and we had a cabin there and stuff, and we would go visit and spend the whole summer. And um, we were swimming in the ocean, playing, uh, you know how you put someone on their shoulders? Yeah. And and you're playing fighting, right? Yeah. And we were young, and that's what we were doing, my my sister and her husband and my uh, husband and, and myself. And... Somehow, a, a gentleman came by and said, you guys need to get out. The undertow is coming in. It's coming in very fast. So we tried to get out and tried to get out. So everybody just pushed everybody off their shoulders and started swimming. Well, good old Lonnie here ended up in the undertow. And um, I was maybe taken out maybe about, oh, I don't know, maybe about a quarter of a mile out mm, long and way. I was stuck in a coral uh, reef. I don't know what you call it, but there's a lot of coral Yeah. and my legs were stuck. So I tried to look down and, and the water was very, very torrent, very fast. And I tried to look down to, to pull my legs out and I was bleeding but, but I couldn't get my legs out. I was covered in seaweed and I couldn't get myself out and couldn't get myself out. And I was, you know, losing my breath. And um, finally, I didn't panic or anything. I did it very slow and very calmly. But then I looked up and there were these huge sharks swimming around me and fish, lots of fish. And swimming around me, and the water was very, very bad. And that's when I panicked because the first thing that came to my mind is not that I was going to die, but that I had my contacts on and I didn't <laughs> want to lose my contacts. And I kept thinking, I don't want to lose my contacts. But then I panicked when I saw the fish because I've never seen fish like that. And I panicked. And in an instant, I heard a beautiful voice of a, of a gentleman. And he said, close your eyes, Lonnie. 
and he called me by my name and he said, close your eyes. So I said, okay. And in an instant, I closed my eyes and within two seconds or maybe a twinkle of an eye, I'm sitting on this little rock and the little rock has eyes. And he looks at me and he smiles and he says, telepathically, he tells me, sit on me. You'll be okay. Sit on me. So I sat down and I was like this little three-year-old sitting on a little stool. And he was so beautiful and so comfortable. And I didn't want to move. And I kept, you know, sitting there holding on to this rock. And then all of a sudden, to my left side, was my Lord and it was Jesus. And he said, he was sitting there with his arms behind his back somehow. And, and he was beautiful, beautiful. I mean, gorgeous and bright, so bright, so glowy, so beautiful and in color. And when he spoke, there was music letters, music, being, you know, a musician always sees written music. Yeah. It was music dancing all around me in color. And there was rainbow and there were, there was, there was gems and there was music and colors I've never seen before. And I looked at him. First thing out of his mouth was, do you know who I am? And I said, I think so. But I wasn't sure because I'd never seen him, you know, like that. I wasn't sure. And the next thing I said to him was, I really love your shoes. <laughs> and he said, he said to me, oh, you like my shoes? And he giggled. Okay. And then I said, I love them. And they were beautiful golden sandals. I mean, beautiful. And, and your belt. I said, your belt? matches and he goes belt yes right here right here and I pointed to his belt and then he laughed and he said Lonnie you're so funny and I said no you're funny and he goes where do you think you got it from and I said yep and I, I was like a little kid you know <laughs> yeah. like a child yeah. and and all I could think of was I wanted to hold him and I wanted to be with him. I didn't want him to ever let me go. And then he said, I, he says, you do know who I am. And I said, I'm not sure. And then he showed me his hands. And I'm sorry. He showed me his hands. And he said, put your finger in my hand. And I said, what happened to those hands? I said, there's a hole in your hand. And he said, go ahead, Lonnie, put your finger in the hand. And I did. And then he showed me his feet and he showed me his side. And I said, oh gosh, I started to cry. And I said, are you in a lot of pain? And he said, not anymore, not anymore, because you're here, not anymore. And then I, he hugged me and I hugged him and I didn't want to let go. I just did not want to let go. And he said, you know, Lonnie, it's not your time. And I said, it's not my time. He said, no, let me show you something. I said, okay. And he said, come, bring your little rock over here. And I went over there. I put the rock and the rock talked. Okay, I had little eyes. And I mean, it was so comfortable and nothing like here, nothing. And he waved his arm and he said to me, look down there, look. And I went, there's a girl in the water. And then he goes, yeah, there's a girl in the water. Can you see the shore? I said, yes, I can see the shore. I could see my mother. I could see my father in the water looking for me. I could see my brother-in-law and another gentleman looking for me. And I could see everybody on the shore, the paramedics and the Coast Guard looking for me. 
So and, you were uh, looking down. You were looking down at the Yes, thing. I was looking down. And I could see stars. I could see many, many, many stars above me and on the side. And then I could see um, he, he waved his arm and I could just see Earth. I could see Earth. And, and I said, I know that girl. And then he goes, yeah. He starts laughing and he said, yeah. He goes, that's you. And I said, oh, my gosh. I was just like in awe, you know. And, and I said, I had a bright orange bathing suit on. That's why I could see it, you know. And I could see it, the body in the water tangled in seaweed and just going back and forth with the ray, the, the rage of the water, you know. Yeah. And, and he said, you have to go back. And I said, no, I, I don't want to go back. That I don't want to go back. I just don't want to go back. And he waved his arm again, and he put a picture of my mom. And he goes, you need to take care of her. And I said, Lord, you know we're not close. And we were not close at that time. And he goes, you need to take care of her. And I go back, and you need to learn, and you need to study. And you need to tell people, tell people about me, tell people. And I, I said, okay. He goes, I'm going to send you back, but I'm going to tell you something. And I listened. I listened very closely. And he said, it will hurt you a little bit because I'm going to give you breath from your feet on out. So when I took a deep breath. Um, it came from my feet. I could feel it coming all the way up. And then all of a sudden, I woke up. And I looked around and the paramedics had stopped, uh, you know, working on me. And my dad was there and he was holding me. And he said, you were gone, Lani. You were gone. You were purple. You were full of water. And I said, but dad, dad, I saw him. I saw him. My father was raised Pentecostal, so he knew what I was talking about. And uh, I was so happy that my brother-in-law had kicked the top of my head, and that is how he pulled my body out. But they, it took two guys to pull me out. And uh, that's why they thought I was gone, because I had been in there an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, maybe. Oh, wow. And I should have been gone. Yeah. Two years ago, I had stomach surgery, and my physician came into my room, and he said, Lonnie, he said, do you see this cup? And I said, yes, sir. How do you feel? I said, I feel great. I really do. And he said, this is seawater salt water from the sea and we could tell because we didn't we did a what they did a microscopic uh procedure on it right to to see what kind of water what liquid it was and he said it was seawater from the sea he said how did you get seawater between your lungs and your stomach and i told him i drowned and he looked at me and didn't believe me. But he looked at the water and he said, you had this in there all that time? I said, yes. Yes. And it was a cup and a half. Wow. That's amazing. Was, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, it, 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 I, was, I was really amazed that he brought that in, you know. And, um, and I sat there and I showed it to John and my husband. And he said, oh, my gosh. You've been carrying this around? And we couldn't figure out why I was having such a bad time, you know, as I got older, you know. And he, he told me, he says, no one has ever done that. No one. So I went on to college and I finished and uh, I never told anybody because I started telling people, but I would get um, slapped 
mocked and pushed and criticized and demeaned and left out. People wouldn't talk to me. They said I was crazy. I went through about 10 years of that. And uh, finally, I said, you know, I'm not going to do this. I'm just not going to do this anymore. I'm tired. I can't do it anymore. It's too hard. It's way too hard. I would find myself crying all the time. I couldn't do it. I couldn't live a normal life. So I became a nurse and I was working at the University of Arizona one day. And uh, I got into a semi car accident. A semi totaled me out. And I saw an angel go between the semi and my car. And I survived. I was in coma a day or two, couldn't remember anything, couldn't remember my name, couldn't talk, couldn't do anything. And my Lord came and he said to me, you need to talk. You need to learn and you need to talk. And so I, I remember being down maybe 20 hours a day in sleep and trying to gain my composure back, trying to gain my health back. It took me seven years to learn how to talk again. And I promised the Lord that night, I will talk. If you let me talk, I will talk about you. And I will do it. And I'm, I'm very, um, how do I tell, very private. And I don't, don't go out a lot. And I don't do a lot of things. So I was kind of like afraid because I knew what I had to face. The enemy approaches you so easily when you start working for the Lord. So I was really afraid. And, and then finally, after that happened, that accident, and I learned to talk, I told myself, you are going to do it. You are going to talk and you're going to learn words and you're going to learn how to write, how to read and how to speak. So I went and worked with the Arizona Deaf and Blind and they taught me sign language, and I learned, and I went to the Assemblies of God Ministries, and I taught. I taught uh, children in every congregation I could find, and I spoke my testimony to many, many people here, and I still got, I still got persecuted. I still got slapped and I still got pushed around, but I said, hallelujah, I don't care. Go ahead and push me all you want. I'm still going to talk. And that's how I'm still talking. That's pretty amazing. I'm still talking. I mean, there are some, you know, slightly unusual things like uh, you know, the fact that if we go back to your original experience, like the rock that talked, I mean, that's, a, that's pretty yes. unusual. I saw children. I saw children playing in the in the field in a beautiful grassy field but the grass wasn't grass it was diamonds and but you could walk on it and it was beautiful green and you could see colors and you could see music and you could see the children running around and the Lord told me those are children that have been killed or aborted or left alone to die and they were happy and they knew who I was. They knew who I was. They all did. They all knew who I was. And, and you remember, you remember everything about yourself. You know you're alive. You know yourself. You think you have your body, but it's not your body. Because I couldn't see my legs, but yet I could feel like I was dangling my legs, you know, uh, on a chair, on a, on a rock, you know. And... And he was just fantastic. He was beautiful. I'm telling you. And you hear music, music, music. I've seen angels. Um, after that, I, I had to get a divorce from my husband, ex-husband. And 20 years later, I met John and had a beautiful ceremony. And the night that we got married, um, I had an ain't visit from an angel. Um, he came real close to me and he said to me, he, he smiled down, he looked at me, he looked at John and he said, it's okay, it's okay, you're going to be fine. And then he left, but he talked to me telepathically, you know, and then I smiled at him and he said, I'll be back. 
and he left. And it has happened maybe three times. Wow. Three times. Yeah, I've seen them. They're beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And yes, they have wings. But this one had four wings, not six. And he had beautiful feet with four wings. And then the other one had four wings. And he was protecting me between the two vehicles. You know, and it was hard. It was very, very hard when I couldn't speak. But I said, I'm going to do it. And it took me almost 15 years. And here I am. So when you're going back to the first experience, um, yes, sir. Did, did Jesus actually t- say his name at all or did you just figure it out because of the hands and the side and the feet? He, he didn't tell me what happened. He didn't tell me. He just said, look. And then I went, I know. That's when I figured it out. And I said, I know. And then he goes, you need to go and you need to learn, you need to teach, and you need to you need to take care of your mom. Well, um, it's been 20 years that I've been taking care of my mom. She's 88. She's, she's doing great. Um, I'm the only one taking care of her out of the three girls. Um, no one else has come forward. She would have been by herself. And I'm taking care of her in every way I can. And then he told me that when I was done taking care of her, that I would be back. Uh. So I told John, I'm not antsy, I'm not anxious, I said, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. I am not afraid of death. I'm looking forward to it because to die is to gain. To die is to gain. So I'm very, very Uh, excited about that. I just can't get anxious. Is that the word? Anxious. Yeah. The the thing is, when you had that drowning experience, you weren't actually a a Christian. Um, So how did you end up making the connection to actually becoming a Christian? Oh, when my son was born, I'm sorry, I forgot that. When my son was born in 1972, I went to a retreat in Prescott, Arizona, and I went up to the altar to pray. And that was like at nine o'clock in the morning. Well, they had service. Anyways, I fell asleep. I was in a deep coma, deep coma. I at nine o'clock at night, the pastor came up and tapped me on the shoulder and he said, Lonnie, wake up. Lonnie, wake up. And I, I was like in high heaven. Um, I, I, I kept thinking, where, where have I been? And he said, it is nine o'clock at night and you've been here all day. And I started speaking in tongues. And he said that I spoke a little Hebrew and I, and I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my gosh. I don't, I don't know why I feel so great, but I feel great. I was so full of energy. You would have thought I had eaten a big dinner or something. I, I was just so full of energy. And he smiled and he said, it's very late, Lonnie. You've been here all day and everybody left and came and you're still sitting here. And I never knew, never knew one minute at all. And I knew that I was saved, though. I knew I was. And then I went, um, when I married John, I went to the Assemblies of God College and um, got my my degree there. And then I started teaching and I said, you know, it's the greatest thing ever. It's the lightest on your feet ever. And I haven't stopped. I love it. But the greatest thing was that I got to see him. I got to sit with him. I got to hold him. And, And he's He's just unbelievable, unbelievable. And you do not want to leave him. And you know his love. You know his love right there. I I had, I was like holding on to him and I cried because I had to come back. I did not want to come back for no reason. And he put the reasons before me and he said, do this and I'll have you back and and I, I said, you better call me back. And he said, yes. 
I already have, he said. And he, he didn't speak like we speak. He spoke in music. He loves music. Oh, he loves music and any kind of music. He loves music. And he told me, he said, he speaks in music. He speaks in color. He speaks telepathically to you. And he speaks with love. Beautiful. Just beautiful. I mean, I, I, there are no words that I can explain on how great he is. There's no words on the English language that I can tell you. I knew who I was. I knew what I was doing. I knew everybody on earth. Um, I knew everybody. And, and I, I could see children on, in heaven. I could see angels. I could see the stars. I could see many, many, many stars. And I said, wow, look at this. And, and he just smiled. And he's so humorous. And he's so welcoming. Uh, I mean, and, and, and it's like, wow, he, he is beautiful. He had long hair like you. He had long hair. And he, he was just beautiful. And, and his smile and his eyes and his, his glow, he was just and the most thing that he laughed at was when I said, where did you get those shoes? <laughs> I was so into women love shoes, yeah, right? Yeah. So I grew up always thinking about shoes and we were all girls at home. So we always fought over the shoes. So I looked at his shoes and I went, oh, my Lord, look at those shoes. And he smiled. I mean, he thought it was hilarious. I never knew what he actually looked like and how he was dressed ever in my whole life. So when I came back and I started studying, I looked it up on Revelation and it talks about his dress and his belt, the grid, grid they called it, gird, gird, gird. Well, yeah, 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 and his shoes, they were golden sandals. Just beautiful. I mean, part of me was still flesh in my mind and all of me in reality was spirit. And I kept thinking, I'm still thinking like I'm in flesh, you know, because I was looking at shoes, you know. Yeah. And I would make jokes with him and he he would laugh with me and he didn't want to let go. He just didn't want to go. He He said, be a child unto me. Now, when I was on earth a couple of times and came back and I went through all that trauma of persecution, he w I would hear his voice telling me, even on the radio, I would turn the radio on in my car and I'd be upset and I could hear him say, be still and know that I am God. I'm with you. And that's what I would hear. And... And then I would change the station and then I could hear it again. Be still, Lani, and know that I am God. So I learned. I learned to listen to him all the time. All the time I learned to listen to him. And I, I kind of freak out my husband a lot, you know, but he has come a long ways too. So, so we, both of us are very good followers of the Lord. And uh, I've gone to do uh, testimonies in different churches and have won many, many, many with the testimony that the Lord told me to speak of. Many, many salvations. And it wasn't me. It was the Holy Spirit helping me to say my words, you know, because seven years ago I had a harder time to say my words. But now I think I'm better. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. I think so. I think I'm I'm good speaker. Yeah. Now. <laughs> so, what do you think is the main message that he, that, you know, what would have wanted you to get across to people? The Lord is real. The Lord is like you and me, and He is real. He. A, a lot of people think that oh, that's just history. That's not real. Um, none of this happens, but the Lord put me in a, in a second heaven, I believe it was not the third, like Paul, I, I think I was in the second heaven 
and because I could see the stars, the moon, the sun, you know, but with his arm doing like a wave, he showed me earth. And I sat there with him for a long time. It's like having a conversation with the best friend and not ever leaving, you know, and, and you say, wow, this is, this is better than breathing. You know, I want to tell people, do not stop loving the Lord. Love him. Enjoy your life. He doesn't care about law. He cares about you. He cares about you living your life to the fullest. If you go out and have fun with your friends, have fun with your friends. Enjoy your life. But always, always carry the Lord with you. And he will take care of you in every direction. He says, I created you to enjoy your life. I did not create you to be solemn, sad, and follow law. I created you to love life and people. People, lots of people. And I've never lived by law. Like what I mean by law is... Can I go to this place and dance? Of course. He doesn't care. He loves dancing. You know, he loves music. Can I have a glass of wine? Of course. But you don't, you know, you don't overdo it. You know, everything overdone is something that he says you shouldn't do. But anything that you do at minimal is fine. I would be ready to go now. I would be ready. I would love it. But I have a duty to do, and I'm going to do it because he asked me to do it. And he has been here for me every day of my life. And I'm healthy. I'm 66, as many books as there are in the scripture. <laughs> and, and I told him, I said, I don't know if I'm going to make it to 66, but I did. Yeah. And um, I think I'll probably live another hundred. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's up to him, you know, but I'm still going to work for him. But what about people that are just living any old how, like living in sinful lives and drunkenness oh, and all of that stuff? Well, if people are living in sin and they don't know him, they don't have a relationship with him and they don't know him, then they like, they, they think that's the way you should live. No, because sin to sin, it's either sin or the Lord. And to sin is to die. And not our die, dying, but this, it, you don't gain that kind of dying. It's to sin is death. Death forever. It's not eternal life. And, and in actuality, if you, you live your life and say you got into an argument with someone, it's okay. Just go and repent your argument. And you know what? The next day, God will wipe your slate clean. He will wipe you clean. But if you continue and continue and continue and continue, he'll give up on you. Because we only get so many chances to be saved. It's not going to be a lot of times. It's only going to be certain times, and then he's going to give up on you. But the more you sin and you know the Lord, the harder it's going to be for you to turn back. Because every time you go to sin, you're going to get worse, 10 times worse. And then it's going to be harder and harder and harder. But if you just, if you have an argument or a disagreement, hey, Lord, I'm sorry, I blew my top. I don't know what I did wrong. But you explain it to me because I ask for forgiveness on this, Lord. And I, I promise you, I've got, to, I've got to learn. I have a temper. I have to learn. And he will. He'll teach you right then and there. And all of a sudden, you won't get angry for a long time. It's, it's, and it's that easy. It is that easy. But people think it's hard. It's not hard. It's easy. It's really easy. Um. And, you, and it's like you walk every day and you say, oh, gosh, what am I going to do today? Okay, Lord, I'm not going to get into an argument. I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that. But you know what? I might do it because I'm a weak person. I'm in flesh. And when you're in flesh, you're weak. You just say, show me what to do. And he will show you. 
he will show you. It's like that. It's just like that. It's like, you know, it's so that easy. He didn't tell you to go do this and go do that and go stand in a corner and hit your head against the wall, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. He just said, yeah. He just said, do it. Just ask me. He said, ask me. I'll show you how. And I always tell my kids, if you get into trouble, holler for the Lord and tell him, Jesus, what do I do? I'm stuck. And he will give you an answer within minutes, within seconds, you know. And if he didn't give you an answer, it's because you weren't saying it loud enough. Say it again, <laughs> you know, because he's there. He's there all around you. You have an angel sitting on your right shoulder. You have an angel. And that angel interprets your prayer instamatically, like Instagram, like tweet. All the way to the Lord. And then the Lord says, ah, oh, I got it. Okay, sure. Okay, take care of her. And then he comes back and tell, takes care of you. It's amazing. It's better than tweet, you know. It's faster. And and that's how he is. That's, that's his whole personality. And he told me, he says, I will be with you, Lonnie. I will give you boldness. I had never spoken before, and I spoke in a congregation of 500 people maybe more. And I gave them my testimony and I couldn't speak at the time that well. I had an interpreter and um, the it was in Spanish. It was in English because I speak Spanish. So I did it half Spanish and half English. And the interpreter couldn't believe it. She was getting all confused. And, and I said, it's okay. I can do this. I can do it. And I did it. And the boldness, I was scared half to death when I walked in there. And the boldness that the Lord gave me was the Holy Spirit speaking out of my mouth. And I kept thinking, did I say that? Did I say that? No, I didn't say that. Did I say that? And then all of a sudden the words were there. The compassion was there. The glory was there. There were, I'm, I'm telling you, the music, the, the, you can hear angels singing. Because angels sing beautiful. You can hear angels singing. And about maybe 220 people came up and saved their souls that night. Wow. It was, it was amazing. It was amazing. I was in awe. And I said, Lord Jesus, thank you for being with me because I couldn't do it. I, not me. I couldn't do it. I couldn't talk in front of a class. I, I couldn't do it. But I, I don't know how I did it. I did it. And... Then the pastor came up to me and he said, uh, he said, Lonnie, I can't believe, you know, how great you spoke. I said, no, no, it wasn't me because I don't even know how the words were coming out and the mouth was moving, but it wasn't me. And I'm honestly telling you, it wasn't me. You know, um, I do the same thing with Pastor Steve. Pastor Steve tells me, Lonnie, it wasn't me. I know it wasn't. I can see the Holy Spirit speaking for Pastor Steve, and he don't even know it. He doesn't know it, and I can see him. The, the listeners probably don't know which Pastor Steve you're talking about. We've had him on our show. That's Pastor Steve Aiken. Yes, yes. Pastor Steve Aiken. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and you're and, part of his church, is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, I am. Yes, Southern Arizona Community. Yes, it's a wonderful, wonderful church. We're a poor church, but we're a great church. And rich in the Lord, rich in the Lord. What would you say to people that are, uh, you know, that see God like as some sort of a policeman in the sky waiting to, you know, almost batten them over the head every time they do something wrong? Oh, no, 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 no. He's not. He's not a policeman. He's not a detective. He's not a God. He is your Lord. He's your friend. He's your brother. He's your father. He is everything that you've wanted in your heart. And if you carry him in your heart, you won't have nothing to worry about. Nothing. Um, you see, we're not in a flesh world. We're in a spiritual world. And what you don't see is the spirits that are coming to attack you through things, through material things. Like if you lose your keys... It wasn't you. It wasn't. It was a spiritual warfare hiding you and help and hurting you. 
If something happens in your family, it's a spiritual world hurting you so that you'll stop thinking about the Lord so that you can change your mind and say, oh, I'm tired. I don't want to do this. I've been there. I know. And I turned my back on him, but not speaking. And look what happened to me. And he gave me a second chance. He gave me a second chance because I really didn't, I really was persecuted. I did not want to go through that anymore. I was tired of getting pushed and, and I'm still getting persecuted. My whole family is not saved. My whole family is Catholicism and my whole family think I'm crazy. They, they say, Lonnie, oh no, she won't. She does. She just talks about God all the time. She just, you don't want to sit with her. Oh no. Yeah, that's, and I have a big family, big family. And some of them now are coming around. Not all of them, but some of them are coming around. And when they have a problem, they'll call me and they'll say, Lonnie, what do I do in this case? And I show them where in scripture, because the Bible is your instruction bullet booklet for living. That's what it is. It is an instruction book booklet for you to live on earth until he comes back for you. And if you don't want to learn it and you don't want to read it, then you're going to have a lot of hard times. But if you read it, the more you read it, the more the Lord enters your heart without you even knowing you might be asleep. You might read one chapter and not think twice of it and then go to bed. And the next morning, you're thinking about it, and it's embedded in your heart. And then the Spirit will tell you, go read another chapter, see what happened. And then you read another chapter. And the next day, the Lord tells you again, go read another chapter. And it's the Holy Spirit telling you, get ready, get ready, get ready, learn, learn, learn. It's not, it's not a quick thing. This is something you have to do in long years of your life. If you're young, it's wonderful. Start young. Start young. I started at 22, and then I got tired, and I said, no, I can't do this. And then I finally realized I couldn't do it because I was letting the enemy beat me up. What about people that are letting the enemy beat them up, like people that have got addictions and things like that? Oh, you know, What God. would you tell them? I would tell him or her. Read your scripture, and if you don't read your scripture, you ask God right now on your knees, right now. You take this thing away from me now because I don't want it anymore. Take away the drugs. Take away the addiction. Take away that feeling. Take away that, that emotion. Take away that demon because addiction is only a demon. Take him away, and it's a very heavy demon. Take him away now. And with a matter of seconds, after you have asked in Jesus' name, as after you have asked him in his name, your body is going to correct itself. It might take two seconds, and you're going to feel great. You're going to feel great. And you will never, never crave that again. It's your choice. It is your choice. That's why he gives us choices. Because I've seen people get addicted. And, and be in the, working as a nurse, I saw many, many drug, drug addictions. And I would pray for them and they would, they would look at me like, no, you know, I don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. And it's the demon inside them telling them, don't do that. But you need to go over that and say, Lord, give me the wisdom, give me the understanding, give me the boldness to get this demon out of me and get this drug off of me and don't let me do it anymore. Get this alcohol off of me, get this, whatever I had taken, whatever habit that you have and give it to him and say, it's not on my shoulders anymore. It's on your shoulders now. Put the monkey on the Lord's back. And then he will, in, in an instant, he will. He will clarify you. And, and I've seen people come out of it in an instant, in an instant, and then just go, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I feel this great. And just take away that habit. It's up to you, though. It's your choice. Are you going to stay that way or are you going to go back 
because you want to be with your friends. You need to change your friends. You need to change your life. You need to change the way you think and you're clean. And the Lord will take care of that in an instant. As soon as you ask, I don't care what it is. As soon as you ask, he's there. But you've got to really, really put it in your heart. I mean, you can't just say, okay, I'm tired. Take this away from me until tomorrow. You can't say that because he knows you. He knows you're going to go back and he's not going to do it. But if you say, Lord Jesus, with all my heart and all my soul and all my mind, I don't want to do this anymore. I love my family. I love my friends. I love whomever. And boom, he will do it. He might make you go through a little bit of sorrow, but you know what? There's nothing that there's no sorrow in heaven and there's, it's all on earth. And there is nothing that God can't take away from you. There ever, he can do anything. I've seen him. He can do anything. I've seen him with his arm just do anything. And I was like in awe. Awe. I, how did you do that? And I would ask him, how did you do that? And we had conversations. And I, there's a lot of conversation that I don't remember because after the, the coma and the car accident that I had, I, I couldn't talk about it. And I, and I just couldn't remember. And he told me, just remember what I want you to remember. And don't add and don't delete. That's what he told me. So, so yes, there's lots of advice for young folks right now that are going in the wrong way, in the, a, a sinful way. But the Lord will open that door for them as soon as they ask, as soon as they ask. That's why he says, ask me, ask me, ask me. It's the same thing as knocking, knocking. But, but you know, you know, Tony, I, all through my life, I was, it's like I was telling Pastor Steve, all through my life, I can go into a room and I can tell you what to stay away from. And, and I can feel it. Okay. And, and um, when I was uh, 23, 24, I'm sorry, 24, I had my daughter. And um, a month after I had my daughter, uh, my doctor, believe this or not, I never had this doctor before. But when I had my children, the doctor that took care of me, and I don't know how, he, how I found him. His name was Dr. Shalom. And Dr. Shalom no longer exists. But I had Dr. Shalom. And um, Dr. Shalom uh, told me that I had ovarian cancer. So he sent me to a cancer doctor. The cancer doctor took tests and x-rays, everything. And he told me, you come back at eight o'clock in the morning, he said, and we're going to sit down and go over these tests because he had already taken them. We had, he had looked at them and we went over them. And then he said, come back in the morning. So when I left his office that evening, I sat on the bumper of my car and I prayed and I said, Lord, I don't believe this. I don't think this is right. That man said I had ovarian cancer, but I don't think so. And he and I walked away and went home and gave it to the Lord. He said, it's on your back, Lord. It's not mine. And I gave it to the Lord. The next morning when I showed up at eight o'clock in the morning, he came, I, he, I went in and he took another x-ray and he comes running in and he was a, a, a doctor from India and he said, Lonnie, what you do, what you do? And I said, what are you talking about? You have nothing, you have nothing, it is gone, it is gone. I don't need you here, go away, go away. And I went out the, the office and I went, yes. So it was gone, and I knew he took it. I knew he did, just like that, boom. I just knew it, I felt it. Yeah, oh yeah, it's amazing what you can do. If you are having a hard time singing that day or playing music, you say, Father God, stop, sit down and say, Father God, 
Let me play like I've never played before, and let me sing like I've never sang before, and the rest of it goes on your back. And then two minutes later, you are going to be amazing. You will. He's going to be there for you. Would you like to pray for our our listeners? I think that would be a good thing to do right now because I'm sure there'll be people that'll be listening to this and thinking, wow. So. Oh, yes, absolutely. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for letting me do this. I thank you, Lord, for letting me speak of you, Father. I'm trying very hard, Lord, to get the words out and to to listen and to obey and to speak of what you want me to say, Lord. Um, There are many, many young, young people out there, Lord, going through lots of, lots of trials, Father. Right now, the world is not good, Lord, and we need you here, Lord. But you know that, Lord. You know what's going on. But, Father, we need you. These young folks that are getting incarcerated, these young folks that are going on drugs, these young folks that are out there protesting. We're having our our president speak in Arizona right now, Lord, and, and it looks beautiful, Lord. Take care of our president, Lord. He's anointed by you, Lord. But there are people that are really, really wrong out there, Lord. They're walking in sin and they're walking with the enemy. Father, clear their heads. Give them the love and the life that they need, Father God. And put them in the right direction, Father. Help them, Father. Help them to get on their feet because we need them, Lord. We need them on our side, Lord. And keep thy demons away and rebuke them, Lord. In Jesus' name, rebuke them. Father God, help Mr. Tony. Don't let him ever get sick again, Lord. Heal him, Father. Give him the most beautiful music and the most beautiful words, Lord. Keep him well and strong, Lord, because we need to have his music all over the world, all over the world, Lord. And Father God, bring his ministry to grow. Let it grow, Father. Midnight, let it grow, Lord. A minute to midnight, let it grow. We need it, Father. Let those people who need to hear this, put them in their hearts, Lord. And all of you out there listening, leave the Lord in your heart. Leave him in your heart. He is the most wonderful, wonderful Lord. And when you see him and when you speak to him, You are going to cry because it is so awesome. It is so beautiful. It is not like others think that it is. He is so wonderful. All you have to do is ask. Ask him to come into your heart right now, and he will be there. And I pray this, Lord. Be with us, Father, all through this, Lord, in Jesus' name, through all our persecutions, through all our days, Lord, and all our nights, Lord, and place the angels all around all our homes, Lord. Don't let the enemy in, Father. And we praise this, Lord, and thank you, Father, because we worship you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, if people wanted to get a hold of you, is there any way they can do that? Oh, yes. Um, I have uh, an email. It is L uh, J B E E eight 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 at AOL dot com. And I also have a Skype. Skype. Yeah, I just learned Skype today. <laughs> so, <laughs> mm, so can you just repeat that email again? Yes, sir. It's L, the letter L, the letter J, the letter B is in boy, and the letter E E, and then the number eight 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 at aol dot com. That's great. So if people want to get a hold of you, they can do it that way. Absolutely, and then you, absolutely. Yes, they could always set up with Skype then if they if they want to with you. So that's really great. Um, uh, this has been, you know, really good. I've enjoyed this discussion and, um, you know, and felt God's presence in it. So thank you for coming on the Minutes of Midnight show, um, Lonnie. Thank you. Thank you for having me. That was one very encouraging message. I really got a lot out of it. 
You can find all of our A Minute to Midnight shows on our website, which is a minute to midnight.com. We put them out as audio downloads on iTunes and on the website, as well as YouTube videos. And you may want to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also hit the follow button down the bottom of our website page. I write, play and record all the music in our shows and you can find some free music of mine also on our website. And A Minute to Midnight is run by a small team and we do run it entirely by donations uh, and we really do appreciate the people that take the effort to contribute to us to help us keep it going because we couldn't do this without your support. So thank you to those people that do help us out. Well that's about it for this show. We will catch you very soon with another episode of the A Minute to Midnight show. Until then this is Tony saying goodbye. Goodbye.